Thank you. Good afternoon again. Uh, I'm Larry Cavanaugh, president of the Steel Market Development Institute, which I think most of you know is part of the American Iron and Steel Institute. I'd like to welcome you all today to our press conference and uh, thank all of you for taking the time. I know this is one of the busiest days, especially for our colleagues in the media, so we appreciate it very much. Um, you know, in the, in the steel industry, we're, we're privileged to work with our automotive customers and supplier partners to develop and demonstrate lightweight vehicle designs that provide high value solutions. Uh, over the past year, we've been from coast to coast at events like this, talking uh, to many of you about these important messages uh, with the need to improve fuel economy and reduce, reduce CO2 emissions. Every application uh, is under review. And the powerful combination of strength and the ingenuity of engineers in our industry and in the automotive industry um, is why steel intensive cars and trucks perform so well, uh, beginning with their design and production through driving and even through uh, their end of life recycling. Please take a look uh, around our exhibit while you're here at the show uh, featuring um, different aspects of the life cycle of materials. We're continually working at SMDI uh, to build and understand through sound science the environmental impact of, of our material and others. In addition to sharing this good news, uh, I'm pleased to be here with other steel champions, our men and women of steel honorees who you'll meet in a little while. Uh, they do tremendous work, and uh, we're very proud to bring some recognition to their efforts. Um, many of you may remember Ron Moore. He's in the, he's in the front row here today. Uh, Ron's an emergency responder and training expert who we recognized last year as one of our steel champions. Uh, Ron's work uh, is fantastic. We thank him for it. He saves lives. Please take the time to talk and meet with Ron uh, after. So uh, in, we want to be really efficient with everyone's time today, so I'm going to move right along. And just before I conclude, uh, I'd like to remind all of you that our colleagues in the steel industry, POSCO, uh, have an exhibit just down the hall. and They have a press conference coming up at 3.55, which I encourage all of you to attend. And now I'd like to introduce Roger Newport, who's Chief Executive Officer of AK Steel Corporation and Chairman of SMDI. Roger. Thank you, Larry. It's a pleasure to be here today uh, to be at the North American International Auto Show. Detroit and the auto industry across America have played and continue to play a fundamental role in the American steel industry, and I am happy to have this opportunity to speak with you today. AK Steel's heritage of serving the auto industry dates back over 100 years, back to 1899. And since then, our innovative steel technology continues to be implemented in many of the cars and trucks today. While the auto and steel industries have gone through both good and bad times together, our partnership remains alive and well, and the future is bright. The bright this bright future is grounded in the technologies of driving automotive design and the production of advanced steels. One only needs to look, take a look at the North American Car and Truck of the Year Awards. The winners, the Volvo XC90 and the Honda Civic, are perfect examples of revolutionizing the lightweighting capabilities of today's automobiles for ad advanced high-strength steels. In fact, all of the finalists for this prestigious award have significant advanced high-strength steel applications. The Nissan Titan features a full, a new fully boxed, full-length advanced high-strength steel ladder system. The Honda Pilot's body is built for more than 20% ultra high-strength steels. The Volvo XC90 has more than 40% ultra high-strength steel in its passenger compartment, and the Chevrolet Malibu has reduced its weight by more than 300 pounds from the previous models, starting with a new advanced high-strength steel intensive platform. These vehicles demonstrate that steel is recognized as lightweight, durable, and sustainable. 
And steel provides great value to the customers and ultimately to the consumers. Congratulations to the Volvo XC90 and the Honda Civic and to all the nominees. Today, we have high strength steel, advanced high strength steel, and ultra high strength steel grades classifications to meet the needs of the vast array of today's automotive performance requirements. In fact, steel can be considered its own multi-material solution because of its large range of performance capabilities. AK Steel and the steel industry are not standing still. We are continuing to develop new grades of steel to help the auto, auto industry find cost-effective solutions to reduce the weight of vehicles. Today's steel grades are as much as six times stronger than the steel that we made in cars and trucks out of, over a decade ago, and three to four times stronger than the best aluminum alloys out there today. No other material has improved its fundamental performance characteristics for the auto industry and applications in the auto industry like steel has, and we are not done by a long shot. So what does the future hold for this revolutionary material? Steel is continuing to reinvent itself. That is, that is why we are excited about the development of third generation advanced high strength steels. This class of steel grades combines the strength of advanced and ultra high strength steels with enhanced formability, further increasing design flexibility. We are starting to see some of these third generation grades in today's cars and trucks. SMDI estimates, estimates indicate third generation advanced high strength steels will capture roughly 10% of the automotive market as quickly as 2020. At AK Steel, we are taking actions to address the future demand for these next generation high strength steel needs. We are building a new research and innovation center, and just down the road at our Dearborn, Michigan plant, we are installing new process technology on our galvanizing line that will allow us to produce both coated and coal rolled next generation advanced high strength steels. The future of steel is bright. Every day we open up new frontiers and do things that we didn't think were possible yesterday. So if you leave today with one key takeaway, I want it to be this. Steel is and always will be the complete cost-effective package to help automotive, automakers achieve their fuel efficiency, safety, and other performance targets. It's the highest value solution for the auto customers and for the consumers, and it's the best choice for the environment. So thank you, and now I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Jody Hall. Jody? Thank you, Roger. As an industry, it is important we reevaluate how we measure and communicate the environmental costs of cars and trucks we manufacture. The current focus of fuel economy regulations is on miles per gallon and tailpipe emissions. But producing materials for the vehicle can have more of an environmental impact than years of driving. In fact, the results from the University of California Santa Barbara's model show us the materials production phase is responsible for nearly 30% of the total vehicle life greenhouse gas emissions for internal combustion engines and hybrid electric vehicles, and almost as high as 50% for battery electric vehicles. These are impacts to the environment before a vehicle is ever driven, and they are not accounted for in the current CAFE regulations or factored into the automotive design. Ironically, when alternative materials are used to help achieve fuel economy targets, materials production becomes an even higher percentage of total emissions, making materials decision during the design phase of a vehicle even more important. The key point is this. Automakers are designing vehicles to attain government regulated fuel economy targets. So vehicles in the same class will have essentially the same fuel economy no matter what materials are used. With the same fuel economy, their emissions during driving will be equal. The notion that automakers will design for fuel economy targets above what the regulations require does not make sense. Increasing fuel economy costs, costs money, whether via materials, engine technology, or other means. 
and consumers will not pay a premium for additional mile per gallon or fraction thereof, especially when the cost of fuel is at a seven-year low and is expected to remain low for the foreseeable future. So focusing on materials production, where there can be a large environmental impact based on material selection does make sense. The body and chassis contributes about half of the curb weight of the vehicle. In our display, you've seen the large difference in material production emissions among the common body and chassis materials. Steel clearly has the lowest emissions of all of these materials by at least a factor of four and up to a factor of 20. This includes assuming extensive hydropower used in the production of aluminum in North America. In addition to more favorable emissions in the production phase, steel requires seven times less energy to produce than aluminum. As you can see in the display, if alternative materials replace steel and body and chassis components for just one major vehicle class, the difference in energy is equivalent to the CO2 emissions from powering over a million homes, the equivalent of a large U.S. city during a year. That's quite a trade-off. Is it really worth the investment? From an environmental perspective, if we were to assume that the SUV and CUV North America production volumes for 2025 will remain the same as for 2014 volumes, and this entire volume is converted to aluminum intensive bodies, it would take approximately 31 million acres of forest to sequester all of the extra CO2 emissions in the atmosphere from this production alone. This is almost equivalent in size to the state of New York. This is also assuming the acreage is densely covered with mature trees, which take, which take on the average of 50 years to reach peak environmental effectiveness. Again, is this really worth the investment? No matter where your concerns lie, the math is simple. Steel equals strength and mass reduction at the highest value and environmental performance to the automaker and to the consumer. The amount of steel-intensive vehicles on the show floor and in the design shop today clearly show the answer to the question, are alternative materials really worth it, is a resounding no. This is why it's so important to take the opportunity today to recognize people and organizations who are helping build a stronger and cleaner future and who are worthy of our annual recognition of men and women of steel. I'd like to ask Roger and Larry to join me on the podium. The first Men and Women of Steel Awards were presented on the same stage a year ago, and much like last year, we looked at a number of automotive designers and engineers, as well as government and community leaders, who showcase both innovation and sustainability through the use of the advanced high-strength steel. The two we chose are tremendous representatives of their organization and community. First, it's my honor to present the Industry Innovative Innovator Award, which recognizes the automotive designers or engineers who showcase innovation through their use of advanced high-strength steel. Please join me in welcoming to the stage the recipient of the 2016 Industry Innovator Award, Mike Swears of Toyota. Mike is Chief Engineer for the Toyota Tundra and Tacoma Vehicle Programs and the Vice President of Engineering Design Interior at Toyota Technical Center. In addition to leading innovative advanced high strength steel applications in the award winning Tundra and Tacoma, he is also a leader in Toyota's forward looking efforts to reduce the environmental impacts of vehicles throughout their entire life cycles. Mike, our, member, our members are greatly appreciative of Toyota's business and thank you for your continued innovation through the use of advanced high strength steels and to your role in Toyota's leadership in vehicle life cycle performance. Sent the award. Oh, here, here. thank you. <laughs> Mike, thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon. First, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for coming, and I'd also uh, like to say that I'm uh, honored and, and humbled on behalf of uh, uh, receiving this award for our design group. 
So we have many design and evaluation engineers, uh, our purchasing representatives, our production engineering, our prototype activity uh, group, and the whole Tacoma team that uh, uh, worked very diligently to bring out the new 2016 Tacoma. We started the 2016 Tacoma with a very aggressive target uh, to improve body and frame rigidity and strength while reducing mass. We also were faced with some new regulation changes for FMVSS 214 and 216. So we looked at the design, we looked at materials, and uh, together uh, with our different groups, we realized that the solution was clear. So high strength steel and ultra high strength steel helped us to optimize our design and reduce the mass of our vehicle. From the current generation where we're using 270 and 440 megapascal yield strength steel, we changed to 440, 590, 980, and 1480 steel in the new truck. The 1480, we actually had to develop a new process, a hot stamping process to form those uh, components. But the benefits to us were very clear. Uh, for Toyota, we could use our normal welding and assembly processes with this steel. Thus, the investment could be uh, held to a minimum. For our customers, it's cost of ownership. Uh, with using steel, the repair cost and the insurance costs can be lower. And then finally, end of life of the vehicle itself. So recyclability with steel is proven. So we know that uh, when our vehicle life is done, that the steel will end up in new products. So again, I'm uh, very honored to receive this uh, award on behalf of the Tacoma team. Thank you. Our second recognition is the Community Hero Award, which recognizes an individual or organization who pioneered the use of advanced high strength steel for the betterment of the environment. Please join me in welcoming our 2016 Community Hero Award recipient, the United States Department of Energy. Accepting the award on their behalf is Dr. William Juice. The U.S. Department of Energy's Vehicle Technologies Office supports research, development, and deployment of efficient and sustainable highway transportation technologies to improve fuel economy and minimize petroleum use. These technologies, which include plug-in electric vehicles, batteries, electric drive technologies, advanced combustion engines, lightweight materials, and alternative fuels, will increase America's, Americans' energy security lower costs, and reduce environmental impact. All right, well, thank you, Jody, uh, and thank you to SMDI, um, both for this award, but also for continuing to play such a key role in the development and deployment of advanced steels uh, of all grades, which are an essential uh, clean energy technology that, that's already paying dividends in uh, vehicle weight and greenhouse gas emissions reductions. It's, it's a tremendously exciting time uh, for steels and for advanced steels. Uh, this is also a very exciting time, very exciting for many of us, in the uh, general automotive material space. There are new entrants, there are new ideas, and there is a continued push uh, for accelerated development. And so partnerships uh, within the community uh, across uh, up and down through the industry and across from research all the way to application help drive that. Um, uh, we and, and I am certainly very excited for the next generation and the next next generation of advanced high strength steels and all of the incredible uh, science and engineering therein. So uh, thank you very much and thank you SMBI. Thank you, folks. I know the press conferences are, are backed up uh, behind each other. Uh, Roger and I will be available if anybody has any questions kind of right here in this area. Uh, that concludes uh, the SMDI press conference for 2016. Thank you for attending. <laughs>